inside the Citrus TV studios for this webisode edition of Q's Countdown. My name is Krista Moore, alongside my analysts Mark Sell and Gabe Terry. So every lacrosse, Syracuse lacrosse fan I talk to right now, they're freaking out. Because compared to the past couple years, they're not doing so hot. Are they exaggerating or are things as bad as they seem? Well, there's some warrant to that fact, Krista. But, I mean, when you factor everything in, with the amount of people that Syracuse has lost in the offseason, I mean, this is a rebuilding year for the Orange. I mean, you got to allow some room for that as well. Well, you know, glass half full here, but their losses are to the number one and number two teams in the country. So, you got that going for you. That's true. <laughs> well, taking a look at where they fare nationally, let's take a look at the national rankings. Syracuse at number eight in the polls with Virginia and John, Johns Hopkins topping the list. Cornell, Massachusetts, and Loyola of Maryland rounding out the top five. Notre Dame is the only other Big East team in the top 10. Villanova is the next closest at number 15. So SU may be going through some growing pains, but one thing that shouldn't change is passion. Some players, however, think that's missing on the field. I think the main focus is trying to get guys to play with heart. Uh, Coach Simmons brought up a good point yesterday uh, to us before practice that we were lacking passion and heart. And uh, you could really see it coming out early. It seems like in the beginning of quarters, we're not, we're coming out slow. We're coming out uh, not, really, not very energetic. But along with missing heart, they're also missing opportunities. With offensive weaknesses such as at the X, Coach Desco says they dig themselves into holes during games. A lot of it has to do with uh, so many more opportunities for the other team uh, and, and fewer for us. And like Derek talked about, uh, you know, we're going to have to be very efficient offensively. Uh, maybe even have to play like some other teams uh, as far as working for good shots and holding the ball more to, to rest our defense. But it's not all bad. They're just a little young. Some players even cited nerves and jitters for their struggles with Johns Hopkins. However, they also noted that these types of games are just what they need. A lot of the guys on the field now aren't really used to the big game hype and the big crowd like that. Uh, a lot of younger guys, and it's going to take some time, and I think a game like this is what, what we needed to uh, get some experience. And uh, we're going to come into Providence, and we're going to go all out and uh, give Providence, I think, our best game of the year. Before we look forward, it's always good to take a look back. Let's take a look at some recent Syracuse history. The last time that the Orange started with two losses in their first five games was also the last time that they missed the tournament. They were 2-3 and three in 2007 with losses to Army, Virginia, and Johns Hopkins. This year also had lopped also had losses to two of those three teams. While 2007 ended at 5-8, and eight, it's also worth noting that this lackluster season was followed by back-to-back -back NCAA championships. Well, there's plenty of season to go, and Syracuse is looking to fix their mistakes with a statement game against Providence. Our own Caleb Lamb talked to the players about how they're gearing up for Wednesday's matchup. After suffering losses to the number one and two ranked teams in the country on its three-game road trip, Syracuse returns home looking to make a statement with a win against Providence. We got handed to us at Hopkins. We didn't come out ready to play. There was no heart. There was no passion. There was no fight. It just didn't seem like anybody wanted it in that game. And um, one of the main focuses were yesterday and today in practice was just getting jacked up. Um, we need this game. Providence is going to come in. They think we're, they think we're going to be down. Um, they're going to try to jump on us early and start and start believing, but we're going to come out with everything we got and just give Providence our best game. We went down and played, you know, a tough team in St. John's and maybe overlooked them a little bit and it showed when we came down to a, a last minute goal. So we don't want to have that same thing against uh, Providence. We want to go out there, you know, come right off the bat. We haven't had a game yet where we scored the first couple of goals, so we're really trying to aim for that. I think this is going to be a big game, especially uh, especially for a face-off group. We need to have like a big blowout game to get our confidence back up again to get going into Villanova, which isn't going to be an easy game. Syracuse looks to keep its perfect record against the Friars intact before taking on Villanova just four days later. Caleb Lamb, Citrus TV. Thanks, Caleb. And let's take a look at who the Orange will be facing. Looking first at senior attack Jake Nolan. He leads the Friars in goals with six, also leads assists. Ryan Shaw in midfield, leading the team in ground balls with 23, also winning over 58% of his faceoffs, something the Orange might want to look out for. Senior Chris Zalewski at goal, while he averages just over nine goals, nine saves. They've lost every game that he's played all 60 minutes in, and that's three. Providence is led by Chris Burdick. This is his 14th season as head coach. And we'll welcome him in right now to Q's Countdown. Coach Chris Burdick, thanks so much for joining us. So only one win so far this season. What's the overall atmosphere for this team? We're still trying to figure out, you know, exactly who we are. I think that, you know, um, 
we're playing a lot better on the defensive side of the ball from, from our efforts Saturday. We've cleaned up a lot of our, you know, our slide and recovery systems have been a lot, were a lot better against Georgetown Saturday than they were the previous game down in Manhattan. And, um, you know, it's something I think we still have to get better at. We, we had a couple recovery errors that led to goals, and Syracuse is very good at, 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 at feeding the ball back inside after the middies push it down to that super talented attack. Your team is often cited for stalling. Are you trying now to implement a faster pace in your offense? You know, we're doing everything we can to play as fast as we can and try to score goals. And I know two years ago in the game in the Dome, we got down 3 nothing, and we held the ball at the end of the first quarter. And, you know, rightly so, my, 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 my central New York uh, <laughs> fan base uh, got into the game a little bit. You know, the Boo Birds were out in the Dome, and I understand that they didn't come to watch us sit behind the goal. But at the same time, as a coach, my job is to manage the game. Got to love the Boo Birds. Well, your past two games have been pretty tight. Losing by one at Georgetown and two at Manhattan. Have those close games helped or hurt? Playing teams tight, I think, is just kind of a little bit more uh, right now for us. It's frustrating because we, we really want to get that first big win. And we just, you know, we, we've been there before. I mean, we played Carolina, you know, back, back in 08. We played a top five Carolina team, 8-6. So we've kind of been in that dogfight before. We just, we just haven't been able to really, you know, finish it. And that's something that we really are, uh, you know, we're working on trying to get better so we can, we can have a better result. Thanks so much, head coach of Providence, Chris Burdick. So, you know, we've heard from like everyone else except for you guys. So let's right just take care of that right <laughs> now. Welcome back in my analyst, Mark Sell and Gabe Terry. We're going to do something called unsettled situation. What I'm going to give you a statement. And if you like it, finish it. Agree. Yay. If you disagree, you don't like it, feed it. Give it away. Sounds good. So we'll start things off. Matt Lerman named the permanent goalie going forward. He was current before he was splitting time with Dominic Lamolinera. So feed it or finish it, is this the right fit at goal? I'm finishing this. I think it really is because at this point in the season, Gabe, five games in, Syracuse has to make a decision. They can't keep going back and forth between Lerman and Lamolinera. And I think that Lerman, so far, what you've seen from him is that he's had this time to develop. And I mean, he's a redshirt sophomore. He's got a couple more years to go here. So he has a lot of time. And he has a lot of time to adjust to playing these teams like Johns Hopkins and Virginia, which he struggled with at times. And Coach Desco has said all year, all year long, we like what we've seen from him. So why not? You know what? They did make a decision, though, at the beginning of the season, Mark. They decided to split time between the two of them. And How effective was it? Yeah, oh, they were winning. They won the first two games, you know, we're in it for the first half and, you know, except for and the third quarter of Virginia. Virginia. Well, either way, I don't think Lerman has looked confident in goal right now. You know, he's, he, their stats are pretty much the same, Lama Linera and uh, Lerman, but it's just a difference of composure. Lerman gets a couple goals down and he just loses all. Well, you saw it against Hopkins. He just lost all confidence in that game when they got that quick lead. Well, Syracuse has some other problems, specifically at the X. In fact, they're struggling so much that late in the game, they're bringing in their best defender, Brian McGill, in for faceoffs. So do you think Syracuse is going to continue this? Is Lerman, I'm sorry, is McGill going to see more reps? Well, it depends. I mean, is Daddy, are Daddy-O and Burr going to continue not to grab faceoffs? I mean, McGill's kind of in the position right now where he, he needs to go up there and at least play defense on these guys, kind of concede the faceoff to the opponent and let, just play defense, try to force a turnover because right now it's just not working for them. I think they're going to they may be better off to start playing a little more defensive game, try to win the game 7-6 to six instead of like a 12-11 to 11 game. Well, Gabe, they're just basically out of options at this point. I mean, you go back to last year where Jeremy Thompson was struggling at the X. He was get, he was struggling as well. And then Chris Daddio last year was as well. And you factor in Ricky Bior and Drew Jenkins, who's gotten a couple reps this year. They're, at, they're out of options at this point. And, and you brought up the good point that, you know, once the faceoff is made, they got to start forcing these turnovers to continue to extend these Syracuse possessions. Brian McGill's the best guy for that. He's at the long pole. He leads the team in ground balls this year with 15. Well, switching gears a little bit, staple of the team, Jojo Marasco, switching positions this season. So, feed it or finish it, Marasco's a better attackman than midfielder. I'm going to finish this. And being the attack position in college across is exactly what Jojo Marasco is all about. It's exactly what he grew up uh, what he grew up doing in Yorktown and he has such a keen sense for being around the crease. Now because of his size this helps him out a lot. He's under six feet, 
five foot ten to be exact, but that helps him out with so much speed coming from X, coming on both of the, both of the GLEs. But when you're at the midfield position, you have to take a much more active role in the offense. You have to be a facilitator as opposed to a finisher. Jojo throughout the entire season has had trouble staying at the top of the box, and it's something that he just still hasn't adjusted to. Only has four goals this year. Gabe, he had 23 last year. You know, I'm gonna feed it, and it's nothing against his attacking skill. It's more he's the most talented and most athletic player on the team, in my opinion. I think so. He, I think he's more useful in the midfield where he can play offense and defense. Kind of sets stuff up for those scores like Desco and Maltz too. Like as we've seen, those guys can finish goals this season. Maltz already with a couple hat tricks. So yeah, I think I feel like if Marasco can get out there, start creating those goals, then he can have a lot of success at the midfield, and Syracuse will have success because of it. Well, Twenty-two for a reason, but. Is he your X Factor for this game, Syracuse and Providence, X Factors? He's not. I'm going with Kevin Drew on this one. Now, with when you talk about Providence, they're probably one of the worst offensive teams in the Big East Conference. Now, not just in points, but when it comes to getting off shots, they're all the way at the bottom of the conference. And that tells you right there that once Providence moves the ball down the field, they have trouble getting it right up against the crease because of really good defenses. Syracuse, arguably one of the best defenses in the Big East going up against Notre Dame. So I think Kevin Drew being the most skilled at his position as a defensive mid midfielder, I see him creating a lot of turnovers on Wednesday night, picking up a lot of ground balls, a lot of struggles for Providence. Well, my X Factor is going to be a Matt Lerman, and we talked about earlier his lack of confidence in the net right now. But, you know, like you said, Providence offense struggles mightily. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the kind of game that Lerman's been needing. He needs a game where he can, you know, make some saves and kind of get that confidence back that Virginia and Johns Hopkins have just taken away. Well, Providence, a weaker team. Syracuse looking for a statement game. What's your prediction? I think Syracuse is going to get it done. I see Syracuse winning this game 11-5, to the final score. And you heard earlier, Brian McGill said we're going to come out with our best game of the season against Providence. They're back at the Dome, which is going to be a good night for Syracuse. Yeah, I'm going to go with Syracuse, too. You know, there's a big, di there's a big difference between Johns Hopkins and uh, Providence. <laughs> That's for sure. Syracuse, uh, <laughs> Syracuse says, I'm going to pick a guy to score 14-8. to I think they're going to get back on track. They're going to be back at home for the first time in a while. I think this is going to be. I think there's going to be a big confidence builder for the team in general, and I really expect them to uh, have a lot of success against Providence. Well, thanks so much for joining us. That's it for this Cuse Countdown webisode for my analysts Mark and Gabe. My name is Krista Demore. Have a good night, Syracuse.